Hi, good evening. It's uh, Thinking Slow. I wanted to do a quick video uh, which explains the fact that um, more cases of the Delta variant are being registered amongst the partially or fully vaccinated than are being registered amongst the unvaccinated. So partially or fully vaccinated actually accounts for 54% of the new cases until uh, 2nd of August 2021 and I want to explain where that number comes from and there's a couple of caveats also that need to be uh, given around the number. So this is uh, zooming in on that chart. So the blue section are the weekly cases uh, coming from partially or fully vaccinated and the orange section is unvaccinated. Um, there's a couple of nuances here that I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on, but uh, I wanted to zoom in on that last period till the 2nd of August 2021. And basically what you're looking at there, uh, roughly speaking, is about 17,000 uh, new cases of the Delta variant coming from partially or fully vaccinated uh, versus about 15,000 just under uh, from the um, from the unvaccinated to give a total of about 32,000. And uh, I think that could be a surprise for many people because the press line and the government messaging is that this is all uh, COVID in 2021 is a problem of the unvaccinated. And in terms of cases, that's not true because the majority of cases to the 2nd of August were from the partially or fully vaccinated. Just to give a couple of bits of data about where, where that comes from, so you know it's all official, um, those that chart comes from uh, Public Health England variant of concern briefings, and uh, they come out roughly uh, every, well, the, the position is as of every two weeks, you get a briefing document, and the chart's just showing the movement between one period and the next. So um, here you can see the position at the 2nd of August and the, the prior uh, technical briefing was number 19, which was the position at the 19th of July. And all that chart is showing you is there was 30,000 uh, increase in unvaccinated or cases amongst the unvaccinated over that two week period that translates roughly into the 15,000 I was talking about as a weekly rate. Um, and then on the on the vaccinated uh, piece, the, the total increase is about 34,000. Uh, if you add up these three and compare them against those three, that's an increase of 34,000, which on a weekly rate, because that's 34,000 over two weeks, works out at 17,000 per week, which was the uh, the dark blue um, line I was showing you and, and you can see it again that's the 17,000 that's the 15,000 so the majority of the increase in that period to the 2nd of August was was cases from partially or fully vaccinated so that's where the number comes from uh, there's a few statistical details that I'm not going to go into but um, one particular one is the data was missing on the 5th of July this is a uh, it was missing from the Public Health England briefing, so there's nothing much we can do about that. But uh, that roughly is where the number comes from. Uh, you can also derive the same chart for hospitalization, and this has been a very big theme in North America and Canada, that um, uh, hospitalization is all due, down, due to the um, unvaccinated. And again, that's uh, completely not true. Using that same methodology where you compare the position at the 2nd of August with the uh, 19th of July, you can get this sort of roughly a weekly uh, flow rate. So uh, in this particular period, you had on a, on a weekly basis then 580 um, A&E admissions without staying overnight and excluding the, um, the, the number of admissions where they were diagnosed on the day of admission. So this is people coming into A&E with an existing uh, test result. So they become A&E uh, COVID admissions. And then the blue section are the partially or fully vaccinated, which is uh, on a weekly basis, 580. And then on the orange 
section that number is 720 to give 1300 a total weekly uh, admissions rate basically so again uh, that there, there are sli there are more unvaccinated hospital admissions in that period but it's not it's not night and day significantly more and actually the ratio is 55% were unvaccinated and 45% were vaccinated so you know, this is the, the idea that you're hearing, you know, 96, 97 percent of all hospital admissions are um, unvaccinated is not true. And I explained in the previous video that that's all achieved by manipulating the, the definition of what it means to be unvaccinated. So the UK numbers that you can get from those technical briefings actually give you a better picture. And this picture is showing, OK, slightly more unvaccinated, but not night and day more. So it's sort of 55 percent versus 45 percent, 55 percent being the unvaccinated. So this is just a back of the envelope calculation. You know, what would you expect? So everyone will say that there, there are more people vaccinated, therefore, you would expect uh, more vaccinated hospital admissions. But in reality, what, what, what you'd be looking at is if you believe the um, official numbers that the vaccine provides, I mean, I'm using 80% reduction in risk uh, of, of catching COVID, although in some of the documents they're talking about 90, 96%, but even using 80%, um, if you if you then say th there's a risk for 25% who are unvaccinated and then there's 0.2 of that risk, i.e. an 80% reduction applied to 75% who are vaccinated, you'd expect then, if those numbers are correct, to see maybe a third of hospital admissions being vaccinated and two thirds being unvaccinated. Uh, and you're not seeing that, you're seeing this roughly 50-50 split. So something you know does, doesn't add up here basically uh, and those are round numbers you know can get into a lot of detail but um, to me the 80 percent reduction looks uh, somewhat suspect basically at this stage and you can see that on this last slide um, this is the, um, the 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 emergency admissions as a percentage of cases for the Delta variant. So uh, the blue is vaccinated and the uh, orange is unvaccinated. So 4.1% of unvaccinated uh, cases are getting uh, A&E admissions um, and 3.4% vaccinated. So uh, th th there's a difference, but again, it's not night and day. Um, uh, and I'll go into a little bit of a caveat about the age profile of the cases because they're different. Um, same story for percentage of cases with overnight admissions. So you admitted into over A and E with an overnight stay, which is a much lower number than uh, just going into A and E and going out of A and E. So that's one point two percent of uh, Delta cases versus one point one percent for vaccinated not not a big uh, gap there either. I'm not seeing enormous um, improvement on the vaccinated numbers compared to unvaccinated. And then on the case fatality ratio, well, thankfully, it's lower, much lower than it was for the uh, alpha variant. And actually, the case fatality ratio is, is double in the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated. Um, but that is, to be fair, a function of age and uh, the age profile of uh, vaccinated is, is higher than unvaccinated because you started with the older age groups first. So I don't think you can read too much into that, but it is a mathematical uh, fact, basically. And um, they have broken this down again into another dimension, which is over 50 and under 50, and it gets quite messy there and I have to I have to acknowledge that for the the over 50s there does seem to be a benefit for um, vaccinated versus unvaccinated but the number of cases and admissions involved involved is tiny so you, you don't get a very good uh, representation but this is again you know actual numbers taken from those uh, public health England briefings you know how many 
were admitted versus the total number of cases. So this is completely official data. It's not something that's made up. And uh, again, I, I'm not seeing a huge uh, benefit from vaccination here. Um, I think that was really the main message. And, and the reason we do the videos is because uh, we're being pressured, obviously, from every single angle uh, to taking the vaccines. And the whole media narrative uh, and the government narrative, which is one and the same thing these days, uh, is that this is all a problem of the unvaccinated. And as we're told constantly, the vaccine is safe, as, safe and effective. Um, and you just keep repeating uh, that catchphrase until it becomes true, I guess. But um, in terms of effectiveness, it's not doesn't seem to be particularly strong evidence at this uh, at this level uh, and safety we've also been into on other videos as well so you know this these are the real numbers that are generally not reported properly i don't think and you won't see in in other in other outlets so uh, if you've liked this or any of the other videos then please uh, subscribe because this is a sort of labor of love at the moment and uh, there's no point in doing this unless there's subscription and circulation of the material. Um, and then the last thing, um, you know, don't cave in, I guess, to the pressure. And as we say at the end of every video, the most important thing is to stay free. And that's uh, much more important than staying safe. Um, you can't have safety without freedom. And uh, that's the purpose of all these videos is that... Uh, we don't get railroaded into things uh, that we shouldn't be railroaded into. Thank you very much. Goodbye.